In this worked example, we're taking a look at a stationary Death Star explodes into three pieces. The masses and the velocities of the three pieces immediately after the explosion are shown. We're trying to solve for the speed V1 and V2 here. The word explosion gives you a clue that we want to use momentum conservation. So the initial momentum equals the final momentum. We know enough about this object to calculate its momentum and it's all acting downward. And so the momentum here is going to be mass times velocity. There's 0.1 kilograms moving at eight meters per second. So there is 0.8 kilogram meters per second of momentum in the y direction. If the initial momentum in the y direction is zero, then the final momentum in the y direction also has to be zero. And so we could think about this as like negative eight. And so how are we gonna add up to positive point, I'm sorry, point eight, how are we gonna add up to positive point eight? Each one of these masses must have a component of its momentum that's acting in the positive y direction. And it's split, so each one has a momentum of 0.4 kilogram meters per second. Note that that's the momentum and not the velocity. In order to solve for the velocity, I'm gonna to have to remember that momentum is mass times velocity, and I know the mass of this thing. And so there's 0 0.05 kilograms of mass traveling at some speed V, but that's the V in the Y direction. You're only solving for the Y component here. And so if you solve for that, we can show that Coincidentally, the velocity of this object moving down is the velocity of each of these objects moving up. The up component of the velocity here adds up to eight. And so maybe there's an idea where it's like, well, since they're each half the mass of this one, there's a way to sort of just equate, well, eight meters per second down shared between two objects half the mass is gonna you know, add up to each one moving up at eight meters per second. But thinking through the ideas of you know, momentum is mass times velocity, and being able to you know, plug in sort of what you know about this and clearly show, yes, the velocity here is eight meters per second. You can then work with either one of the vectors, right? I'll work with V2. We know it's 60 degrees. We've solved this component is eight meters per second up. And our job is to solve for this one. And so the final bit of working that really clearly shows that is what function relates the opposite to the hypotenuse, hypotenuse, and that's the sine function, right? So the sine of 60 degrees is equal to opposite eight meters per second over either V1 or V2, right? Those would be sort of identical triangles. And so that's the last sort of bit of working, you know, that you would need to sort of show that you, you know, prove that the answer is V, 9.2. When you solve this for V2, you get 9.2. But if you just have this working by itself, my question is always, where did this eight meters per second come from? You have to be able to clearly sort of show that the up component of velocity is eight by applying momentum conservation. That's the key idea there. Momentum is always conserved. And collisions and explosions. And so when you read something, oh, there's a collision, there's an explosion, you need to go right to this idea. It's conserved in the y direction and it's conserved in the x direction. Because there's no x component of momentum, it's true that like this component of momentum in the x is equal to this component of momentum in the x. And because they're the same mass, yes, the velocities are going to be the same. Okay, it's just a, a sort of coincidence. And may the fourth be with you.